Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for another blessed day. It's been good. God is good. Hallelujah. It is uh, August 29th, 2018. And I just, uh, first of all, I want to give an update. Just got off the phone with the radio ministry. God is so good. We now have one paid slot and two free slots that God gave us through them. We're going to be on Saturday. Wait a minute. S Saturday at 5.45 p.m. Sunday at 12.15 a.m. And then Sunday at 7.45. I'm not sure if that's a.m. or p.m. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, I just want to give a quick update before I start this powerful but needed word today. Um, Heavenly Father, as your grace has moved in me, through me, by me, and for me, I pray, Lord, that your anointing will be felt through this word. I pray that you will move in power and might, breaking strongholds, casting out demons, and just doing what you do, Lord God. For it is not by our power, nor by our might, but by your spirit, Lord, that things are done in the spiritual realm that take place in this physical realm. As this word goes forth out of my mouth, may you preach and teach your word because it is your word. And you watch your word to make sure that it performs what you called it to do. But you use our mouth to call it forth what to do. You know that angels are sitting around waiting to be hearing the word so that they can flee according to Psalm. Psalms 103 verse 20 and 21 that says they hearken unto the voice of God's word. Well, let your word come out of my mouth, Lord God, into the ears of these brothers and sisters to get a true revelation in Jesus name. Amen. So I was reading the Bible and, and, and this scripture came to me and another scripture came to me. And as I was writing them down, Bits and pieces came to my head about something that's going on in in the in the body of Christ, right? So you know that we have false teachers, we have false prophets, we have a lot of false people saying they're the Christ, and so the Bible itself states in very clearly that they will be false teachers in the last days, and so. I was ministering in the jails and this gentleman came up and he was so adamant. Like there was these two dudes the other night that was just back and forth with me. And I and I had to stay in love. It, it wasn't easy because they was getting me in my flesh. But at the end, because I stayed in love, I stayed in humility. It was a breakthrough for both of them. And they both really, really got right. But the one guy had this question. He said that the Lord told him that Christians shouldn't be telling folks how to get to God. And there's, you know, there's many ways to God. And, you know, people are talking about Muslims and all this. And I said, bro, check this out. The Bible said, the Bible said that there's only one way and that Jesus is the way the truth and the life. So whatever you think you may be hearing is not coming from the Bible. It's like, man, I know God is telling me this. So that was one incident. Incident, But then I was reading the word and I want to share this. So I really pray that a lot of you get this understanding. So I tell the men in the jail and I'm telling you right now here in Facebook. And I'm going to make sure that this message also goes on the radio. But I got to break it down because like I said, it's only 13 minutes that I'm there. But this guy in jail was saying, I go to every service that they have. And I'm like, why would you do that? You know, don't just go to every service because you think you're going to be going into all these services and you're going to get deeper and deeper into God because you have to question like all these people are coming in and preaching just because they're speaking out of this Bible. If it doesn't line up with the Bible, then it's not God. You got to be very careful. You don't just go to all these churches. 
and he and he didn't really get it until I was about showed him what I'm about to show you. And I was uh, sharing with this other sister yesterday. We was talking about um, the radio ministry because by the grace of God, her sister had donated a laptop to um, Save by Grace to do the ministry, right? And so I had another sister too that donated a, a, a Mac, you know. People are, 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 are sowing into this ministry. They are really sowing in. We got people that are sowing into the jail ministry. We got people sowing into the radio ministry now. You know, and, and God's going to show favor to them because the, the Bible says to plant seed and good ground. And I know and you know that saved by grace is a good ground, not because of anything that I'm doing, but it's because it's Bible led, Bible taught, no deviation from the word itself. So um, I was sharing with her how as long and I want you to really get this because a lot of people miss this. As long as the doctrine is in line with the Bible, God speaks to us all in different ways, different um, ways that we see the world, different things that he says. But as long as it's doctrinal, right, God will show like um, we walk by faith, not by sight, that even that scripture, there's a really a whole lot being said with that scripture because that whole scripture in that chapter is actually talking about um, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so we walk by faith, not by sight, knowing that we will be in heaven when we leave this body. That's what that statement, you need to read the scriptures before and after it. But some people say, hey, you know what? That's like my faith. You know, I walk by faith and not by sight. And so they're both understanding of that it, there's a there's a uh there's a faith that we can't see in both of those areas but the doctrinal part of it is right so anyway you know i was sharing with her that because she was sharing some um some statements of things that was going on and i'm like you know that's not doctrinal right and we have to be careful not to deviate from the word of god because that's what the false apostles and false teachers and false prophets they do they deviate from the word and they make it. Remember, the Bible says in the, I think it's first John, that in the last days, they'll have itching ears, wanting to hear what they want to hear. The Bible's very clear. And we have pastors and ministers and teachers and leaders out there just preaching the feel good message. There is no feel good message. I mean, it's like, you know, they, it's Bible, period. And I don't want to get off the topic. So let's jump into this. So the title of this message is False Teachers as Ministers of Christ. So, and it's a trip because check this out in Galatians chapter one, verse six to eight, it says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. And in, in, in the Bible, that another gospel is actually a different gospel, meaning that it's been altered to fit someone's preference. We don't alter the Bible to fit no one's preference. We change to fit the Bible. The Bible's not going to change for us, which is not another gospel, but there, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. That word pervert is change. So I'm going to read it like this. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto a different gospel, which is not a different gospel, but there be some that trouble you and would change the gospel of Christ. The Bible says in Revelation is not to add or take away from the Bible, period. And then verse 8, but, th but though we, now get this, he's telling them, he's warning them about this certain situation. But though we are an angel from heaven, false angels I put, fallen angels, 
preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Now he's warning him, warning the folks that these false preachers, false teachers, false apostles are going to come forth. And they're going to they're going to pervert the word. They're going to change the word. They're going to make it different. The Bible's clear. It says that they'll have itching ears preaching things that they want to hear. That men will become lovers of themselves, hearing their own voice and, and, and getting prideful. And that's not what the Bible said. But here's that warning that there was going to be angels that was coming. Get this. False apostles, false prophets, and false teachers are listening to the wrong voice that's talking to them. Remember, you got three voices going on in you. You got the Holy Ghost, you got the devil's voice, and then you got your voice. If your voice isn't connecting and rolling with the Holy Ghost, you might as well sit down and shut up with all due respect. If the devil's talking to you and you're agreeing with him because your flesh, your old carnal nature, that's why the Bible says that to renew your mind with the word of God so you could start to think different. When you read the Bible, the vo when you're reading the Bible, you're reading the very words of God. You're hearing God's voice. So when God speaks to you, it will line up with the Bible. God is... God is so specific. Everything you need is in this book. If you really look at it, everything you need is in the Bible. And God has directives. He has precepts, concepts, and statutes. All these areas are different. You know, I really wish that those of you that, you know, I get a lot of people that they push like on my sermons, right? Like, I mean, so quick. And I'm like, Okay, that's great if you're supporting me, but don't support me by liking it. Go listen to what it's saying. Because you're not going to get to heaven or get transformed by, by my word. You're going to get transformed by the Bible. What I'm doing is, is, is pushing you to read the Bible, pushing you to study what, I'm, what God is revealing to you through me so God can reveal it to you. And the way that he wants to reveal it to you, like I said, as long as it's doctrinally correct, God may have something else to say to you that's not what he's saying through me because he wants to get your attention. And so the idea is for us to, to hunger for God, to show people a different light. Our walk is to imitate Christ, to imitate Jesus in a way that people will say, you know what? This brother or this sister, that homie got like the love of Christ in them. I mean, they've been through this and that, but look, at they're still peaceful. They're still glowing. They're still humble. It's because the word of God that we've studied, that we've went to church, listened, read the Bible, sat there, prayed, got involved with the word itself. It has transformed us, but we had to renew our minds. So the enemy with false prophets and false teachers and false apostles comes to pervert your mind by having you follow a different doctrine. You know, the devil knows the word too. Here we go. Second Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to start at verse 12. But what I do that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire an occasion to preach and teach a false doctrine to you. What Paul was saying here was that he knew that these folks was out there to do this. And so he didn't give no occasion for anybody to come and do this. So his whole thought pattern was, I need to stop it before it happens. So what he did was he said, I'm not giving no occasion for this. I'm staying on you guys. Verse uh, 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. An angel of light. 
Therefore, verse 15, therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Uh-oh, let's go back to Galatians right here, verse 8, Galatians 1, verse 8. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel, Verse 14, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. I say again, let no man think me a fool, if otherwise yet as I a fool receive me that I may boast myself a little. What we have to understand is that these people that changed the Bible, I was telling these brothers, if you, you, you really want to see what I'm talking about, get you a, um, a King James Bible, even a new King James but get you a King James Bible and get you an NIV Bible. Do this for yourself so you can be very careful of how things work. Read Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Read it in the King James and then read it in the NIV. Please do this for yourself, not for me. And see for yourself how what was written in the King James Version, the most important part was taken out of the NIV. And because I love you all, and because I know that God has used me to preach and teach, that's why when you start getting into all these different translations, you know, even the Message Bible, you take one scripture, the, the Amplified is cool because it opens up, right? But you start getting into the ones that are like, oh, we got to make it so the, even the simplest person can understand it. But what happens is you take the power from it. And, and when you take the power, it's because you're changing words. You're, you're misquoting the scriptures. You're adding to all this stuff. The Bible specifically clear what God says, don't add or take away. Romans chapter 8. I'm going to read to you what it's supposed to say. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnations to them which are in Christ Jesus. That's what the NIV stops at. But it says in here, the remainder of Romans 8.1, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You have to understand something. There's no condemnation to those who are walking after the spirit. But to those who are in the flesh, they're condemned because they're living worldly. You have to get it. There's no condemnation to a Christian who's walking in the light. There isn't because we've been saved. When Paul, in the chapter before that, it talks about how Paul said, the things that I wish I wouldn't do are the things that I do. And the things that I know I should do are not the things that I do. Oh, wretched man of me, who will save me? And he goes, thank God for Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ has come to transform us. What I want you to understand, and I think we really need to get this. When you go to church, are you going home and sitting down and reading the scriptures that you heard in church? Are you listening to the man of God and having your Bible open to make sure that what he's preaching is actually Bible? Because it says in there that there'll be many false teachers or false preachers. You got to get the concept of this really deep into your spirit because it's very amazing how people don't really focus on these angels of, of these ministers of, of unrighteousness. And marvel not, for Satan himself is transformed 
into an angel of light. Don't be so caught up that these guys are doing this because the, the devil did it. And then it says, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform as the ministers of righteousness, which means they're deceiving, they're deceptive. Man, hold, hold on. I got one more for you right here. First John. Let's, let's just knock this one out the box. You need to go read the book of Jude because these guys was marked out for the very purpose of that very calling. But in 1 John chapter 4, it says, Beloved, I'm loving this because if you guys get this, you're going to start holding your pastors, your ministers, and your teachers accountable to this word. I'm held accountable not just to my pastor, but to God. And I tell people all the time, hold me accountable to this word because I will be judged more severely than you. First John chapter four, verse one, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Strictly said, he's telling us constantly to beware. Read him for yourself. Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 12 through, I think it's 15. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. And here's something even interesting. If you jump into Jude, the whole Jude's a trip too. But um, let me see if I can find it real quick because I don't want to spend too much time here. Verse 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, after destroying them that believed not, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. He, when you go on in here, he's talking about how these deceiving men that were coming to preach, that they was marked out for such a day, for such a time as this. Here it is, um, verse four. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into the mischievousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. These things are happening today. People are teaching false doctrine. People are saying, oh, all you need is grace. If you have grace, you're okay. You could stay sinning because Christ died for your sins. Man, 1 John 1, 9 says, confess your sins to him and he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. Brothers and sisters, don't just go to church. Just don't listen to sermons. Don't just listen to mine. I tell you all the time, go and read. Get your Bibles. I, I that's one sister said, man, I'd be pausing it and reading. And I, I, she goes, I study with you. I study with you because you're telling the, the truth. And that's what I am. I'm going to tell the truth. I ain't never going to sh sugarcoat nothing. I ain't trying to make no friends. I'm not trying to. I tell the, I tell the men and women in the jail, the kids, the juveniles, brothers and sisters on here. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to save your soul. If we become brothers and sisters on the way, praise the living God. But we need to not deviate from the word of God. I started that way. I definitely am not going to finish that way. So once again, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I got to get ready. I'm about to go. Um, getting ready to go back into juvenile hall again. God is sending me back into juvie. I, I I swear, my hands did so much ministry. I, it, I have no time to error. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you. And I pray that my brothers and sisters are really going to, to really study this and understand and start holding 
every Christian, every pastor, every deacon, every bishop, every teacher, everybody that is walking in the word of God to the plow of the word of God, not to be deviated from the word of God, not to water down the word of God, to read their Bibles. You said to study the word, study the word, get you around some Bible teaching, believing, season. Men and women who are walking after the word according to the purpose and the calling of that word, not changing the word, not deviating the word, not watering down the word, but walking according to the word of God. Heavenly Father, thank you for this message tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.